What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to create this really minimalistic kind of card design. Now as always there's links to everything you're going to need in the description down below and the requirements section you're going to need the canvas size, the palette, the guide and also the canvas texture brush that I've provided for free in the description down below. As always make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram when you're done share them with the community over on Discord, and if you want to get access to even more tutorials from me, you can come and support me over on Patreon. Patreon supporters get access to three exclusives every single month, as well as the full catalogue of all the previous ones, which is currently nearly 90 at the time of recording. And so with all that said, enjoy today's tutorial, and let's get started. So once you've created your canvas and you've added in today's guide, this is just a PNG image, meaning everything in the white areas is transparent and all you need to do to add that to your canvas is go up to your actions, go to the option of add and insert the photo that I've provided. It's just a little guide for us just to create some simple shapes and just make life a little bit easier for you. So all I'm gonna do is in my layers, I've got the guide on a layer and I've got an empty layer. I'm just gonna grab the guide and I'm just gonna bring the opacity right down to about 20%. You can vaguely see it on screen and work against it in your own work. Now on the empty layer here, I've got underneath my guide, I'm gonna go up to my colors. I'm gonna grab the color here in the bottom of the second column from the right and drag it onto the screen. I'm then gonna go ahead and go to my colors and grab the middle color in that second column from the right. And I'm gonna to go to my selection tool. I'm gonna use the option of freehand and I'm gonna tap on the option here of color fill to turn it on. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a bit of a diagonal line across the screen and create a triangle by tapping a couple of times here to create a perfect triangle. And if we tap on our selection tool, I'm gonna to go to my adjustments. We're gonna blur this together. So we're gonna use Gaussian blur. We're gonna swipe from left to right and we're gonna blur them until we get a nice beautiful gradient across the screen. About 60% is the golden number there and tap on your adjustments when you're done. Now let's go ahead and create some of the shapes. Now you'll also spot that it's almost perfectly symmetrical. So let's go up to our actions. Let's go to the option of canvas. We'll turn on the drawing guide and we will edit the drawing guide. We'll go to the option here of symmetry and we'll make sure the option here is set to vertical. And you get this black line running down the middle of the screen, meaning what you do on one side of a drawing assisted layer is reflected on the other. So if we go to our layers now, we'll go ahead and create a new layer. We'll tap on it and we will go to the option of drawing assist. We're gonna start with the face and we're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab this color here, the top of the uh, second column. We're gonna to go to our brush. We're gonna go into the option of inking. And we're gonna go ahead and use the tinder box brush. And if I tap on this, I'm gonna to go to my stabilization options here and you'll be able to see my streamline is maxed out and my stabilization is about sort of 45%, just so we can get some really nice smooth lines in here. Now the brush does taper, so if you start off nice and thin, you'll have a really nice thin end to your brush on either end. So we've got the tinder box. The brush size is gonna fluctuate, but I've got it about 35% to start with. And we're gonna start inside the face. Now you'll spot this area here around the eye. That's gonna be white and left transparent. So you're gonna to need to follow along with the shapes that I create here. So we're gonna go into the corner of the eye here and we're gonna draw into here, come round the nose and we're gonna go ahead and just go all the way up. Don't worry if you exceed the lines ever so slightly, it's okay. And we'll go all the way up in towards the top point. And then we need to go ahead and sort of link these together. So we're gonna go along here a little bit more, gonna go around this part of the sketch. You'll fill this shape in. And I recommend that we go ahead and we use a little bit more pressure here and just fill it in with the brush. Rather than drop the uh, color in, doing it this way, you're gonna end up leaving a little bit more texture in here rather than just a solid mass of color. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go along this line here in the center. Again, don't worry if you go sort of over, we can go in and erase it in a moment. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and go up and along this line here and roll around nice and smooth into the edge over here. Again, we're gonna to wanna to do this manually. So we're gonna just get in here, we're gonna press with a lot of pressure. And I'm just gonna to continue just to fill in the space. Nice and smooth, nice and slow, nice and controlled. You don't need to rush it. I'm doing it all in one stroke preferably so that you've got sort of the texture and it doesn't overlap in any way. You don't get buildup of color too heavily in certain areas. Now, 
we've got the head. We're going to leave the head on one layer, but we are going to go to our eraser. We're going to tap on the eraser. And we're going to go back in with the same brush, so inking and the tinder box. And the brush size doesn't really matter. I've got it down to a small size of about sort of 13 so that we can just get in here and just tidy up some lines. We don't want to sort of step into the nose in sort of too much of an impeding way. So I'm going to go around here and then just sharpen up this point here as well. Just sharpening up this corner into the eye. That's not too bad. I just need to sort of tidy this up a little bit. I'm keeping this in the video for you because you're probably going to need to do the same. So now we've got sort of the main head shape. Let's create the darker features in the face. So we'll go ahead and create a new layer, tap on it. We'll drawing assist it. We'll go to our colors. We'll grab this color here in the top left of the palette. And we're going to go ahead and draw in the nose, the mouth and the eyes. So we're going to go ahead and start on the nose. We'll just go around like so down into the point and then you can fill it in. And if you can do it in one brush, in one stroke, you're perfect. You've done it as smooth as you can. And then just two little lines there for the mouth. We're then going to take a look at the eye. We'll create a nice rounded shape up here. Now I'm going to actually go ahead and hold my pen down to try and create a nice perfect circle in a sense or an ellipse anyway. And that doesn't quite fit. So I'm going to redo it again and you may need to do the same. I'm going to try and just get it in in one go. And I have pretty much done that. Again, we can always tidy it up afterwards. You just want to create the eyes. We're going to add some very quick accent colors to these. So we're going to go to our layers. We'll create another new layer. We'll go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and we will grab this color here. It is the uh, top of the third column. We're going to continue with the same brush, but we're not going to make it drawing assisted because we just need to add some accents of light. So I'm going to add like a little sort of glim of light on the top of the eye here, a little glimmer up here as well. And then I'm going to take a look at the nose and we're just going to add like a little bit of light on the top. And then we'll do two little lines in here as well. Just two little sort of curved shapes here just to show the nostrils of the nose. We're then going to go ahead and create another new layer. So we're going to go to our layers. We'll create a new layer. We'll drag it underneath the face. We'll go to our layer. We'll tap on it and we will drawing assist it. And we're going to get the chest area in here. So we're going to go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab this color here at the top of the third column. Now this will match up very closely to the background. It's actually the color we're going to sort of use as sort of a highlight tone. So we're going to need to bring it in from underneath the face down here. And you'll start to see it a bit easier towards the bottom of your design. And then as long as you go right to the edge of the screen, you can then go down the edge of the face. And then it's really important that we follow this as part of the sketch. We want to sort of curve downwards and round to create sort of the, the bottom area here of the, the mouth and nose area. And I've let go, but we will just quickly go ahead and we will fill in. So I'm pressing really firm. You can do it in multiple streaks, whatever is the easiest option for you. This color in this brush at this particular stage don't tend to overlap too much. So you don't get like a buildup of color. But we've now done sort of the, the neck, the big fluffy area. And while we're on the same layer, we'll just go ahead and add some features. Now, what I'm doing with the layers is I'm trying to work backwards. We've worked at the front. We're now working backwards. And what's sort of in the second layer back? Well, probably the tops of the ears. So we'll go back to our colors. We will go ahead and we will grab the top of that second column again. So we'll start just here and I'm going to go up this edge of the guide. I'm going to come down on myself and then come down in towards the head again and just fill in the gap. And then we can also go ahead and then start to work on a layer a little bit further back. So I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to create another new layer. I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to tap on it and I'm going to drawing assist it. We're going to go to our colors and I'm going to grab the same color here. So I'm going to grab this color here, the top of that second column. I'm going to zoom in and we're going to start just here and we're going to bring it all the way down to the edge of the canvas. I'm still drawing as we speak and I'm going to go all the way up and up towards that point and then I'm just going to continue to fill that in so we get the texture again we want the texture of the brush not so much as a solid fill and again if we're going to just continue to work on a layer and make our way backwards we could do the ears in this layer so let's go ahead and do exactly that we'll go to our colors we'll grab this color here the middle of the uh, third column and we'll draw in the ears so we'll start here and we're going to go ahead and just make our way all the way up towards the edge here and then draw it in. And again, I'm continuing to draw. I'm still drawing, just filling it in. There we go. We've got the ears. 
Let's then go ahead and create the antlers. So we'll create another new layer. I'm going to drag it to the very bottom. So just in front of our background, I'll tap on the layer and of course drawing assist it. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this color here, the top left of the palette. And we're going to draw them in. So you only, of course, need to draw it on one side. And you'll see that I've got three lines here. What I've done is this line here and this line here is the maximum width that we want to make it at this point down here. So essentially what we want to do is we want to come down our antlers and then just slowly try and make that width the antlers as we make our way up, it will get progressively thinner. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that properly. I'm going to press a little bit firmer as I get a little bit further down as I join back into the body and you can press a little bit firmer at the top here and you can see now I'm two thirds of the way of that thickness. I can make my way up towards an antler if I want to, like a little particular point. And you want to kind of just create little sort of avenues for the, the antlers, create them a little bit more sort of janky, a little bit more angular. That's fine. Now I'm going to come down here, run that back in, and I can just thicken that up a little bit at this top point. I'm then going to go ahead and create one that runs off at this point. And then we're just following the guide. We're just following the guide, making sure... Our thickness tends to get a little bit thicker towards the bottom. So I'm just going to undo that one. I'm going to let that one run all the way up to the edge. And then I'm going to try and create this one as well, like making sure that gets a little bit thinner as it makes its way up towards the top. You should end up with some fun little antlers. And if you zoom in, you can always go ahead and just sort of thicken up the base if you want and just sort of run that in like so. Thickening it up at the bottom is not a bad thing. And also just maybe just correcting some of these lines where it needs to be. So just kind of thickening them up in the areas you think is necessary. And once you've got your antlers, we now pretty much have all the basic shapes of our deer. But I want to draw in the background as well, the little scene that sits at the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and tap on our background layer again and we will create a new layer. We'll tap on it and we will drawing assist it. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab this gray here, the middle of the third column. We're going to continue with this brush, but the first thing we'll do is we'll drop it down to 2% and we're going to draw in a nice sort of uh, design here for what is a very sort of wintry kind of bush. There's not a lot left on the bush itself. So working in this space here, we're going to go ahead and just create a long sort of line, a little wobbly line that's going to going to have a little bit of kind of a curve to it. We're trying to ultimately frame our uh, sort of deer here in the middle. So I'm going to start down here and I've got a 2% brush size and I'm just going to start to just think about how I can run like the main uh, route through this little wobbly line. And then from there I can start to branch off in different directions. So I can start here and then create another little branch and just let that run off to the left. And you can always break off from that as well. You can create little tiny little sub areas of just minimal kind of branching. And then from here, we can go ahead and create another one. And you could even let that run into this curve if you wanted to, and just let that run off down here. And we'll create another one that runs up, a little bit of a fall off there. Where this starts to pivot upwards, I can then create another one that sort of falls off again over here. And we're gonna add some fun little leaves to this. So you can just create these really thin, really lovely, very, very thin, little branches on the end so you can really kind of get in there and create really fine fine levels of detail where we can add some hanging leaves from and you might just about be able to see it on camera they're really really super fine and then in the gaps where you feel like you've got like a little bit of open space you can just simply add in like a very small one that's just branching off maybe it's a new shoot or something like that just a little something like this we're going to continue all the way up though, of course. So we need to just try and when we make our way up here, can we can we branch off at any point we can? So we can just come up to here and then I'll make this sort of the highest that this goes. And of course, I'll zoom out in a moment so you can get the full picture. But now I'm just going in here and trying to create all my little avenues that I can add all my little leaves to momentarily. Let's just add in a couple more on here. I'm going to add another one here. And again, all this is, is ultimately just framing. We're just trying to just frame our, our subject in the middle here and then add some leaves to it, make it look a little bit pretty and just add a little bit of extra content to your subject. It's not always necessary to do so, but if you can do something like this, you'll just fill out the screen a little bit more. 
but if you want that super minimalistic look you don't have to do that at all so what we'll now do is we'll add the leaves to it so once you've got a good amount of sort of branching like this and you don't have to stop at this point you know you can carry on and you can also add more as we make our way through the, the journey if you feel is necessary I'm going to change the brush size up to 35% and we're going to add in some leaves. Now all you need to do with your leaves is start off really light, then a large amount of pressure and then really light again. And you'll create a simple leaf like this. And we want to factor in, they'll be pointing a little bit more downwards. I'm imagining this is a bit of a winter scene. So I'm going to go along some of my branches, press really firm and then let that get really light. You can then go ahead and start to, once you get comfortable with that, you can start to kind of curve some downwards and create a curve to them rather than a straight line. And you're ultimately trying to go for like a bit of an S shape at times. So I'm gonna go along this one, nice and firm, and vary up your sizes. You don't have to make them all the same. You know, that one's a lot larger than this one. I'm gonna go ahead and just look on, not all the ends of them, but just a few, and you can just sort of space them out how you want them to be. You don't have to sort of uh, go about them in the same exact way as I've done. But if you want to, you can sort of match up quite closely to mine. Some are going to shoot downwards. Some are going to make their way upwards. I'm most definitely going to start to sort of think about down here. Can I like introduce a large one just to get us started here? And then once we've got a large one there, can I then start to add in another one that just runs off the screen? I'm just thinking about sort of framing and how I can go about just filling in sort of the bottom area of our design. And again, you don't have to go off of every single little little branch, little shoot that you created. You can go off of the main area as well, like a little one like this. And I'm just going to continue just to fill out this scene and just create little variations on the leaves. Nice minimal effect to them, nothing too heavy, nothing too intense. On some of the really small ones, try and get like quite adventurous with... Um, a cluster maybe of these much smaller ones in comparison it's it's all about pressure if you can keep your pressure really light and then nice and firm and then really light again you can create some really thin ones you can also see it took me a couple of attempts on that one and you know it really will be just a good practice in your pressure control you know how can you control the brush and what can you create from it and the smaller ones on the end I think look really good because it's much like when we create stars in a lot of my tutorials, you know, I like to have a couple of different sizes in here. So if you can create a nice variation in sort of the sizing of your leaves on here, you'll be able to really create quite a full, quite, uh, quite convincing scene. Like with the stars again, if you have three different sizes, I think it really fills out the sky quite well because you have the close stars, the furthest ones, and then everything in between. So I'm now just taking a look at my design. Can I add in a couple? You can see from my one as well, I'm particularly trying to pay attention to not having a couple quite close to each other. I don't necessarily want um, you know, too many touching or too many too close to each other. I want them to all have some nice amount of spacing to them. Let's just carry on from here. Variation in them. But if you want to, you're more than welcome to create, you know, whatever scene you like. It might be that you, you really like the aesthetic of the smaller ones. Always remember that these tutorials are more about sort of the techniques and concepts maybe that you've maybe not yet discovered. And then from there, you can create whatever world you want. You know, all I'm here to do is teach you little sort of different styles, maybe mess around with different brushes you've not yet experimented with and seeing what's available out there and you will find something of, of real interest and that takes your fancy the most and then from there you'll just lean into it quite heavily so that's all these are meant to be this one of this particular design is just meant to be a lot of minimalism you know and messing around with textures in brushes to be honest you know we're using a lot of different brushes we're going to end up with a canvas effect at the end if that's something you do want to add to yours and this brush here has a nice sort of quite quite nice texture to it. And it's got that little bit of a painting look to it almost. It's always a favorite of mine when a brush does that. Now up here towards the top, I'm just gonna sort of really try and make a lot of these leaves up here quite small and very quite dainty, just at the very top. And then maybe a few that come out from sort of the main body are a little bit bigger. I 
I think this is always very, very therapeutic. That's always the main thing, isn't it, with these tutorials. You always want them to be quite nice thera nice and therapeutic, just a, a nice release from whatever's going on in the world, in your own world, and just have some fun. And when you're filling out like a, a scene like this with the bush and all the different greenery here that we're adding, you can just get lost in it. That's always a good sign that I'm doing a good job. If you're getting lost in the in the tutorial and in the work that you're currently working on, that's great. Let me know in the comments, of course, what you thought of like this particular design, the minimalism, the style of it. Now, once you sort of filled it out and you're sort of happy with it, I'm taking a look at it now and I'm thinking, can I go ahead and maybe sort of bulk out with a few larger leaves here and there towards the bottom down here, just so that my weight really is heavier towards the bottom and lighter up here towards the top. So I'm just going in here now and thinking, can I go ahead and just fill out a couple more here and there, just a few, nothing too sort of crazy, with some much larger leaves or petals, whatever they may be. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is once you've filled it out, we're gonna to go to our layer. We'll create another new layer for a moment and tap on it and drawing assist it. And then from that, we're gonna just create loads of blades of grass. And I want them all to have a bit of a curve to them. I want them to be ultimately a bit like this. So they're kind of curving, but you know, kind of pointing away from our, or leaning away from our subject. And all I want you to do is just keep flicking, just keep flicking the, uh, the brush and just, I'm starting outside the design as you can see. And then I'm just gonna slowly start to sort of think about creating lots and lots of very varied angles and just lots of grass. So it's like this sort of subject here of our deer is simply just in, in the grass and it's just taking a look at us, maybe peering through whatever it's in, you know, the environment wise. And I'm just gonna fill out the bottom of the design here, lots of blades. You can do the odd sort of larger one if you think it's necessary in like a certain area. You know, maybe I could get away with a, a much larger one like there maybe. It's all about sort of taking a look at every single stroke that you do and just seeing, does it fit? And then towards the bottom here, I'm just gonna simply just keep flicking a few smaller ones that maybe don't make it up quite as high as the the, uh, the few that I was working with there. And that will just nicely fill in your scene. So I'm just filling it in here with a little bit of frame and let them just nicely fall off towards the end. You know, don't, don't sort of run them too close to the edge of your frame. Just a little something like this, a nice little level of sort of minimalism to it. Nothing too intense. Um, I'm just taking a look, seeing if I can get in there with a couple more larger shoots, but ultimately that looks pretty good to me. I'm then gonna go ahead and go to my layers. I'll pinch the two of those together. And now we're gonna work from back to front in just adding in some lighting effects. So on this layer we were just working in, we're just gonna tap on it, we're gonna alpha lock it. We're gonna tap on it and turn off the drawing assist. We're gonna go to our colors. We're gonna grab this color here, the top of the uh, third column there. Your brush wants to be set to airbrushing and the soft brush. Size, let's make it about sort of 15%, so we're in good control of it in terms of the size. If anything, I could probably go a bit bigger, about 25%. I'm gonna go around in a circular motion over here and just add in some lighting onto the edge here and just maybe a tiny bit in behind to just fade out our little sort of scene down here. Like the lighting is just crashing onto the top edge here and just really fading it out. Let's then go to our layers. And what's the next one? It's the antlers. We're gonna tap on them. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new layer to start with there. I'm gonna tap on it and clipping mask it. And because we have texture and we have lighting to add, I wanna do them on separate layers and then merge them together. I'm gonna increase the size up, probably around about sort of 30, 40%. And just kind of like down here, we're imagining a big light source. I'm going round in a circle. I'm trying to catch this right side as well. I'm going round in a circle and just fading them out, creating that really sort of muted, quite sort of transparent look to them almost. A little something like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'll create another new layer. I'll tap on it, I will clipping mask it. Same color, but we're gonna to go to our brush. We're gonna go into the option of drawing and the black burn. You can make your brush either about 28 or in between 10 and 28, whatever's best for you in terms of sizing. And all we're gonna do is just run down the edges here as if we're adding in highlights. So I'm gonna sort of run down here, run down here, and just adding in some really light texture. And I mean light in terms of pressure. We're gonna come down here, down the antlers, and kind of focusing as if the lighting is on our left-hand side up here. So only the left edge of some of your antlers are gonna get some 
attention with some texture. And we'll move across to this side. You might not be able to see it too much, but just do it as if you were carrying on anyway. So that left edge over here, adding in some texture. I'm gonna come down and then I'm just gonna run down the antlers towards the head. You should end up with some really cool, quite sort of crafty looking texture in here. If we take a look at our layers, we're done now with the antlers. If you want to, you can pinch all three of those layers that we just made into one. So now we're just gonna basically repeat the same steps for the rest of the layers. So if we go to our layers, the next layer up is this layer here where we've got two different sections. We've got the body and we've got the ears. We'll focus on the ears to start with. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a new layer, we'll tap on it and we'll clipping mask it. We'll make sure our color is still that color here at the top of that third column. And our brush wants to be set to airbrushing and the soft brush. I'm gonna set the brush size to around about sort of 15 to 20%, somewhere in there just so that we can very lightly just be in control of the lighting. We wanna fade out this ear. We're trying to mute down and minimalize the colors a little bit and just brighten up essentially this left edge a bit more like so. And then just a tiny bit on the underside of this ear over here. We do want this one to be primarily a little bit lighter than this side. Then on the same layer, we're just gonna simply go ahead and go to our brush. We're gonna go back into the option of drawing in the black burn. 28% brush size, and we're gonna focus all of our lines. Now if I just sort of draw very quickly, I wanna kind of point my lines in towards this sort of center point here as if that's where the whole of the ear is. And essentially all the sort of lines that we're about to create, I'm tipping my brush on its side so I can get that side effect of the, uh, the brush. Essentially maybe all these little sort of lines that we draw now with this brush and so on are gonna be little areas of maybe fur, not only texture, but little areas of maybe fur. So if we point them all in towards that center point, you don't have to go all the way in towards the corner of the ear. You can do as many or as little as you like. A little something like this. And then we'll do the same on this side, but with maybe a little bit less of a sort of point of getting all the way into the ear. You know, just like a little bit sort of more towards the edges of the ear along here. The odd little scrape, and I'm very much on the side profile of my pen, just trying to get that little bit of extra texture so that this side has a little bit more of a darker aesthetic to it. Now on this layer, we also have the body, these two little areas down here. So we're gonna go ahead and on the same layer, we'll go to our colors. We're gonna add in a little bit of a sort of muted highlight tone. So we're gonna grab this color here, the middle of that second column. Our brush wants to be set to airbrushing and the soft brush. And with a brush size maybe around about sort of 9%, just gonna very lightly just sort of brighten up this edge over here on the left. And then once we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my colors and grab this color here, the middle of the third column, and I'm gonna darken up the right-hand side. I'm imagining we're coming across the face here where the shadow is then gonna be cast all the way onto the rest of the body, so I'm just darkening up this back area here. And now we just need to add in some little details. So we'll keep the same color, but we'll go to our brush and we'll go to the option of drawing and the black burn. And we're gonna add in some scrapes down here. So I'm gonna sort of point them a little bit in towards the center. You can change the brush size to like 10% if that's a little bit more manageable for you. I'm just gonna point those lines down there and then a few round this left edge as well. Just a tiny bit. We're gonna go back over them with the highlight again in a moment, but just adding in a few little sort of scrapes of little fur here and there. While we've got the same color, let's do the same over here as well. So pointing those lines inwards a little bit more trying to create little sort of inward pointing lines for the fur. We can't really see them over there in the shadows, so that's fine. We'll then go back to our color zone. We'll grab the color here. We'll grab the middle of that second column. And we'll just introduce a few very little sort of light scrapes doing the same sort of angle, but in this sort of pointed area here. So just a few little sort of pointed lines where it needs to be. I'm kind of pointing my pen down a little bit firmer here and there, just a few little pointed lines and then as I make my way round towards the edge, I can add in the odd little tiny scrape. And then we just repeat a little bit of extra color back on top with the soft airbrush, just to sort of feather it out a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and continue with the same color, but we'll change our brush back to the airbrush and soft brush. Make that brush size around about sort of 9% and then fade on this left-hand side. And essentially we should be able to get rid of a lot of those lines there, but just leave a little bit of texture. And then if we switch our color back to the shadow color, this one here, the middle of that third column, we can just overlap again and just fade them out a little bit. So you leave a few little lines here, a little bit of detail, but nothing too heavy. Let's then move into what will be the next layer, which is gonna be the top of the ears and the chest. 
So we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We'll tap on it and we'll clipping mask it. Feel free to pinch those clip layers down if you wish. But this empty layer here we just created, we're gonna go ahead and go to our colors. We're gonna grab that little highlight tone here at the top of the third column. Soft airbrush as we still have it, probably around about 15%. Circular motion, just really blend out the top of this ear. Blend it out. You're gonna kind of match up a little bit to the same aesthetic as the ear underneath. And then over here on the right, we'll pretty much leave that pretty much exactly as it is. We'll leave it like so. So blending out that top area of the ear, just muting it out into the rest of the design. We've then got the chest. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab this color here, the middle of that third column. We're gonna to go to our brush. We're gonna to go to drawing and blackburn. You can make it 10 or 28, whatever's most comfortable to you, but we're gonna go ahead and point these lines inwards. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this layer for a moment. I'm gonna use the drawing assist so I can make sure it's symmetrical and also save us a bit of time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just scrape in some lines here and there, really, really light with my pressure here, just to start with, just to get some directional lines in here. A little something like this. You can do the odd sort of larger scrape here and there, that's fine. And just trying to roll a little bit of that texture into that center point, kind of rolling it, curving it around a little bit, down and in towards this center area here at the chest. And you can really drag out some lines if you feel like that's more comfortable and looks a little bit nicer. Now at the minute it doesn't look like quite so much. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna to go to our brush and change it to airbrushing and the soft brush. We're gonna have that brush size in a controllable size around about sort of a bit smaller than that. Let's go down to about sort of 9%. We're gonna come across again like we did below. So we need to, of course, turn off the drawing assist. So we'll go to that layer, turn off the drawing assist, and we're gonna come across like so and we are gonna follow that line. That's where our shadows are. We're gonna darken up all the way back here and get rid of pretty much all of it and just keep building up and following that shadow across the body, across the, the, the beautiful, beautiful sort of fluffy chest here onto the side profile there. We can add in a little bit underneath there as well. You can see I'm just trying to darken up this little area here and then we'll go ahead and go to our colors and we will grab this color here, the top of that third column. We'll just bring the brush size down to somewhere even smaller, around about sort of 7%, and just kind of fade out a little bit those colors. So on the left-hand side here, those little scrapes and whatnot just tend to just disappear a tiny bit. Just disappear a little bit more, just sort of blend in. We're just trying to add that minimal kind of texture. We're then gonna go ahead and move up into the face. So we'll create a new layer, we'll tap on it and we'll clipping mask it, but on this layer, we're gonna add some additional colors. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this highlight tone. We're gonna grab the middle of the second column. We're gonna to go to our brush. I'm gonna change it to painting and the Goucher brush. I believe that's the right pronunciation. If it's not, don't fire me in the comments. Um, we're then gonna make the brush size around about sort of 10% and we're gonna use this lighter tone here just to sort of add in a little bit of extra color here on the left-hand side. So I'm just trying to slowly build up a little bit of a brighter left edge. And because this is kind of like the real main point of our subject, we can add in a little bit more sort of detail, i.e. just a little bit of extra color. So you can see I'm just trying to follow down the bridge of the nose and flick that up and just brighten up the top left side a bit more and a little bit into here. And at the same time as adding in some sort of much needed highlights here, we can add in some shadows so we can go to our colors we can add in a slightly more muted color. So we can grab this one here, the bottom of that second column, and we can shadow in down here. So we can just shadow in this side of the face a little bit more, keeping a little bit of the orange. You don't need to sort of really take away from it too much. And then a little bit up the side here on the head, around towards this ear. That'll hopefully separate the two as well. And then I'm gonna bring that brush size down to about 9% and just a little bit here on the nose, just a tiny, tiny bit on the nose, just to add in like some additional shading on this side. Let's then go ahead and we can do it on the same layer if you wish. We can go to our colors. We can grab this color here, our shadow color, the middle color in that third column. We'll go back to our brush. We'll go back to the option of drawing and the black burn and we'll scrape in some details on this side. So we're just gonna just bring in some extra shadows, shadowy texture down this edge bringing that up and around, separating the ear from the head. Just a little bit of this scraping texture on this side. 
then we're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the top of the second column and we're going to introduce some more texture on this side so we're going to kind of mimic this side now but just adding in like little sort of areas of texture you can see i went a bit sort of bold there early and then just some additional sort of scrapes in here adding in that little bit of sort of that painting texture to it inside of the nose here you may need to go back in in a moment and add in some additional highlights again but i think we're, we're pretty we're pretty good there and then a couple of sort of scrapes in a downward fashion down the nose as well just just to see if we can add in the tiniest little sort of scrape of texture but other than that that looks pretty much a bang on now at this point we just need to add in some minimal details or you can leave it as it is but i'm going to go ahead and go to my layers i'm going to grab our background we're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it i'm going to drag it all the way to the top underneath our guide we're going to go ahead and we're going to tap on it we're going to add a mask to it the mask will initially be white, but we're going to tap on the mask and we're going to invert it. So basically now that mask is hiding everything of that layer. Now we did this on purpose because these little gaps that you see here are actually the background. And I want to just let the background do a lot of the highlight tones. So I'm going to go ahead and simply draw on the mask to reveal a little bit of the background on top and just kind of erase from it, sort of a negative space. So if we make sure we are on the mask here, if we tap on the layer, make sure it is drawing assisted. If it's not already, just tap on it and go to drawing assist. So again, making sure we're on the mask. Your color is set to white. Double tap in the top left if you need to. Your brush should now be set to the option of inking and the tinder box. And we're going to add in some details. Now, what I mean by details is we're going to slowly sort of just make this look a little bit sort of more furry. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to follow the line of the edge of the face. I'm just going to add in some little sort of scrapes in here just to add in like that furrier kind of look to it and just blend that up around the side and just adding in these little little scrapes here and there and that's essentially what we're going to be doing we're going to be adding lots of little scrapes i can go around sort of the bottom here of the face just just sort of roughing up that line you can go ahead and turn off your guide as well at this point because you might not need it taking a look at this side over here i can still see a little bit of orange i'm just going to reveal a little bit more of that and sort of expand on that separation and now we have separated the face a little bit from the neck if we zoom in i want to go ahead and just just adjust this line and just make it a little bit less perfect and also just make it again a little bit more furry a little bit more detailed so i'm just making my way up the eye going around the eye just adding in some lovely detail and then i'm also going to go ahead and try to just separate the eye a little bit more so i'm just going to come round into here lovely stuff and then from there we're going to add in some extra little lines on the head keeping them really simple little furry lines almost down the edge of the head and we can completely separate the ear from the actual head as well so we can just kind of run in some fluffy lines into there just to kind of show that there's a little bit of fur and just breaking up our shapes separating them from one another using negative space so zooming out we then have some additional details but let's then add some little furry lines as well onto the nose now if you don't want to use the drawing assist you don't have to of course you're going to get that super perfect symmetrical look to it but i'm just quite looking forward to seeing the final effect with the full level of symmetry again it's completely optional if you don't want to do that you don't have to you can just do it on both sides individually but i think it's going to look quite nice because the whole design is going to have that level of symmetry to it we're going to do the same as well round the nose we're just going to kind of rough that up a little bit a little bit more sort of, sort of furry look to it you know try and just flick some lines up here and there just to make that a little bit less perfect and again i kind of want to just maybe think about just there we go just a couple of little lines around the mouth again we've separated the ears you can also go ahead and run down the ears if you want to you know so sort of just flicking inwards from an outward direction just to break up the ear a little bit more if you want to a couple of little lines in here just to sort of fluff up the edge so we're just basically chopping into the edge of the the ear to just add in this kind of little fluffy effect you can do exactly the same here all we're doing is revealing the background so you can work your way in using negative space of the background to just chop into here take away a little bit of that structure just making it a little bit more furry 
Now we can go ahead and continue this on down into here as well. We can do it into here. Now you will end up separating on this side too, but you're revealing the background. So what you want to kind of do is just make your way, sort of chop your way down this sort of line and reveal a little bit of that background coming through like so, and not too much sort of detail, especially over here in the shadows, but you are separating the two using again, negative space, just to chop away into it. I'm gonna add in a little bit more detail up here on the nose, just a couple of sort of larger little areas of the lighter touches. There's just a few more little flicks up and down the nose. And then the only thing I wanna do is if we go back down to the face here, where we added in the color and different areas of texture, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with this lighter tone here at the top of that uh, third column. I'm gonna to go to my brush and change it to airbrushing in the soft brush. I'm gonna make the brush size around about 10% and just very lightly in this top left edge of the head, just sort of lighten it up a little bit. I just wanna lighten it up, make it sort of blend in with the rest of the lighting effects. Now at this point, I just wanna add in some little canvas texture. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers and just underneath our guide, we'll create a new layer We'll make sure our color is set to this color here in the top left of the palette. And you'll need today's included free brush, which is the canvas texture. For me, it's in a Halloween collection because that's when I initially used it. But for you, it'll be under imported right at the very bottom. We're going to make sure our size is maxed out. And all we're going to do is very lightly in the top left, add in a little bit of texture and then progressively get a little bit sort of darker in the bottom right. Now you can draw this on and just leave it as is and just add in that little bit of canvasy style texture and leave it like so. Or you can go ahead and go to the layer, change the blend mode from normal to overlay, and then just duplicate it until you're happy with the texture. It will sort of adjust some of your colors of your design, but I think it gives it a little bit more of a dynamic lighting effect. And if I go ahead and pinch with two fingers and I go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, make sure to come and follow me over on Instagram, tag me in your finished creations, share them with the community over on Discord, and as always, a massive shout out to my supporters on Patreon who help make these videos possible. If you want to get your name featured in videos, sneak peeks, early access, and most importantly, access to my exclusive catalogue of nearly 90 tutorials at the time of recording, hit the link in the description down below and come and support me over there. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll probably like this one on the screen now. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.